I'd like to move up a level and really start to probe what does this mean for you know, particular use cases, particular industries? And for that, I would be asked if um, we could be joined on stage by Eve Bernard, the Senior Managing Director at Accenture Technology Europe. Please join me in welcoming Eve. Thank you. Um, so Eve, let's, let's warm things up quickly. Um, yes. Tell us briefly about your role at Accenture, particularly What's exciting you these days? Well, what exciting me these well, so Yves Bernert, I'm uh, in Accenture. I'm leading our technology business, in particular in Europe, and as well. And you may ask you what's the link with AI because I'm leading as well for all Accenture, the business we do with SAP, Oracle, Microsoft, Salesforce, and Workday. What is AI there? But uh, what excites me is that when I started my career in the 90s, yeah, beginning of the 90s, yeah, yeah. early 90s, um, technology were slow. So we had, uh, you know, there was still some COBOL jobs around. Um, yes. uh, there was still uh, some, uh, you know, client server stuff that were coming slowly. So we had time to digest. I don't know you, but you know, we, depending on your experience, we had time. And now what's happening is that it's coming like exponential. So we have to find, I, I have to find new way to learn. So I move back to the learning time at speed. So five years of study was very relaxing. Now it has to happen every week. So that's what excites me. So again, you've sit there, I mean, you've done lots and lots of work on digital transformation, building these systems, and you've seen these waves of, of change hit. How do, you, how do you see AI relative to what, what we've seen before? Um, where, uh, you know, why, yeah. why, yeah. why, why yeah. such a big deal over the last year? Okay, well, um, if I, I mean, AI started in the 50s, right? Uh, so extremely long ago. And uh, when, I, when I started my career, I, I had the first project at the Ministry of Defense in France. So in this nice country, hundreds of thousands of employees, obviously, soldiers and others. And uh, we developed at that time, uh, I remember, a system which was predicting uh, uh, what, are, what is the workforce they're going to need in the army in the next 15 years. And my boss over there, who I was working for, said, this is AI. So, but it was not exactly AI because, I mean, I, I wondered, you know, in, in, in consulting, we don't use any slide anymore, but maybe I say I just put one. Is that okay? It's okay, one slide. Okay, one slide, no more, I promise, right? So, on, and on that one, it was more about sh what we call now shadow learning, sounds a bit strange, but it's about, it was not a learning system. It was a system that we were able to develop an algorithm to predict, that's all. But the system was not able to learn. And simply because the algorithms were not you know, uh, deep enough, but also there was not enough proliferation of data. We were just accessing to the French army data, no data from outside, and the computing system was too slow. So the thing that happened since then is that, okay, that thing in the center existed already, and uh, what we saw, and based on the Catherine presentation before, what happened since then there's been many systems developed around AI, around the core system of, uh, um, how, do, how do you call it, uh, uh, deep learning that uh, she just presented to us. And all the system, you know, around computer vision, around uh, video analytics to recognize, as you mentioned, like a cat or not a cat, the system are, we have, there is software that has been developed that is helping that. When we talk about uh, natural language understanding or processing, there are now tools in the, in the system where you can do voice uh, interaction. That was not existing before. Uh, chatbot system were not existing before. So there are many companies in the US or in France or in Europe who've been developing uh, solutions, technical solutions, including like speech to text, speech and optimization, audio signal processing. All of those solutions, which are simple software, have been developed around. So if you take AI was there, now it includes um, deep learning, as we heard before. There is all those technical solutions around, plus there is the massive data availability, plus the ability to make the, the calculation, so then we can do it. And before that, it was not possible. So that's the, that's the, new, uh, that's the new thing. So, but we had to, I think we all have to, to see, as, as you said before, Catherine, how to deploy it. So, I, and if you try to, to, to categorize all of those systems, there are systems in that who are able to sense. 
So to collect an information, like a video analytic system, like a recognition of speech, so send the system. The, the second solution that you see all around here are here to comprehend, so understand the signal. What is it? Is it uh, as you say, it's a cat or whatever it is. And, and then the system, so, I mean, the solutions that exist are able to act, take a decision instead of a human. So take a decision instead of a human, and as we are before, learn. So whenever you we talk about an AI system, now that we deploy, it's all about those, those four steps that we have to, uh, to think through. And um, yeah, so that's the main, as an introduction. I think well, I, one thing I, I find interesting that the slide draws out is I see these like two levels. One is a little bit what Catherine focused on, which is as a company, you have data, you can use these techniques to do your own learning from yep. your data. But then we also see there's a whole set of modules that have been built, yep. like speech recognition, image recognition, mm -hmm. where those systems have been built with other data, and now you can suddenly bring those into your solutions. So just to, to flag yep. that. Yep, absolutely. But again, just to start making this transition, as you said, all this action going forward, these new possibilities, mm -hmm. all sorts of new possibilities opening up. What are you seeing in terms of where with clients, mm -hmm. what industries, what use okay. cases seem you know, particularly mm -hmm. uh, live today and, and okay. then a little bit what's, what's coming in the future? But um, Okay, is it, yeah. sure. So, well, the, the first thing is that we, it, it's a bit, I fully agree with what Catherine said, we need to try and, and do tests, but you, you it's true, and at the same time, you still have to convince company that it makes sense. So we did a lot of, I mean, Accenture or others, but we did a lot of study to explain. So to government and to companies, explaining by, I think by 235, we can double GDP growth if we use AI correctly. In company, in the next few years, we can, uh, uh, I think, almost like increase by 50% the profit in company. So they say, oh, really? And uh, you, we may see one of our uh, clients in the afternoon so don't say that to him when he comes, but uh, two years ago, I came to present to him the tech vision, you know, what, what we see. And I say, you know, AI, we hear about it, it was a year and a half. AI, we hear about it, but now it's ready. And I think you if you want to lead in your industry, it's not about looking lo cool in tech as a CIO, but if you want to lead in your industry, you must implement AI. For and when I started, he said, no, 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 I don't want to hear, I mean, I, I love your tech vision, but AI, no, no, let's move to the next subject. I said, no, 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 we need to spend time on it. A year and a half later, he's gonna come here and explain, it's one of the most uh, 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 successful company in this country uh, using AI. So he, it, 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 it turned. So, um, so you have to convince that. But if I, when we make the study, we look up at all the industry and it impacts all of them. I mean, the analysis show that there are some like education, accommodation, construction, retail, healthcare, or agriculture, where they have the highest benefit, you know, at least those ones. But when you look to the paper and the study, there is no industry who is not touched. There is absolutely no industry that is not touched. Um, but at the same time today, there is only few who are doing it correctly, meaning it's not about deploying just an AI system. You need to master your data you need to master uh, the understanding your process and understanding how you need to adjust your talent. Because it, it's a mix of the three as a company. You, you have, when I, I will mention later about the talent, you can't implement AI without thinking about the impact on your people. So if I look to the, uh, to the industry or some examples, so they are, and we think if we categorize them by benefit, if you take, for example, speed to market, so there is a company in, the, in Asia, uh, in, in Telco, and, and the thing they did uh, is to deploy fiber optic. And you know how much costly it is to deploy fiber optic? But the biggest cost is to make the plan. Uh, where to send a worker, you know, to, 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 to create a hole and, and put the, the cables, etc. So what was done is just to scan, leveraging uh, uh, whether Google Map or uh, any other, doesn't care, but to scan and all the planning stage to see where to put the fiber, depending whether there is a, already something existing in the layout of the countryside, was done automatically, everything. So around 50% of the work was done automatically done. So that's, that's around you know, accelerating, not only reducing the cost, but accelerating the speed to market to, depl to deploy a fiber optic. Um, on the 
energy side, as a, as a, not only as an energy company, but uh, uh, energy consumption, like the metro in Madrid, I don't know if you saw that, they deploy a system with sensor captors on all the, uh, uh, the fan across the metro and making automatically whether we need to increase the speed, whether we need to adjust the, the way it's operating, and the outcome, which is now totally done automatically, and they reduce the CO2 consumptions, and they, increase by, they decrease by 20% their cost of electricity as well. So just by, by doing that. Um, ultra personalization, I think you, you talked a bit about it before. We see it like, of course, Amazon type of company, but as well in the, what we call in the industry X.0, to do pure, extremely quick customized product, depending on you know, what you like. So the system will automatically propose the type of shoes that fits you, and then you can customize it and do it at speed. Um, other type of things that we like and maybe like less, um, which is around new revenue stream, and you will understand why it could be less. If I think about new revenue stream, uh, if you think you are a tax uh, agency, <laughs> even the tax agency in France who has a big work to collect a huge amount of money, but like in some other country, but in France we are extremely good on that. <laughs> and, um, um, and one of the things they, they did, or let's say, I would not say we helped them, but so you don't spread the word, but <laughs> one of the things they did is that they've been scanning the, the country. And um, in, a, in a place with a, around 4,000 square meters, we were scanning houses. And you know, check whether there was a pool, or there was something built that was not matching what we declare, right? So uh, obviously a bit stressing because uh, when you have not declared, like a pool in France costs about 200 euro a year as tax. So uh, in that space, we found around 20,000 suspicious pool. <laughs> yeah? And among that 8,000, Totally sure it's a pool, right? <laughs> so 8,000 multiplied by 200, da, da, da. So it's pretty some few millions of dollars that you get that immediately. So it's a kind of new value stream in that case for the government. So nice. Very but exciting. <laughs> yeah, exciting. I don't know for who, but exciting, yeah? <laughs> well, uh, I did declare mine before um, <laughs> because I knew the project. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> safety. Uh, safety, I mean, Okay, it's, I don't want to be in the dark side, but there is so many issues in security. Right? But it's so strange that the system exists to implement a safety system to scan a behavior of someone in the street who's gonna make something bad. The technology exists, and we deployed that in Singapore, for example. We did it long time ago when the Pope came in Lille in France, but I mean, maybe it's a government thing that we need to make better to deploy it, but the technology, for government or for conference managers or whatever to, to identify your behavior and avoid having someone looking at the TV, watching all day and say, oh, maybe we should do something there. Or when there is something happening, you're gonna watch the TV later and say, yes, that's that person, let's try to find. No, immediately you send a message on the phone to the police agent who will run to the place and stop the guy before the event occurs. So this is just for students who are moving from Fontainebleau to Singapore later. Take note. Okay, that's good. Yeah, <laughs> well, I hope it's going to deploy. But I would say we haven't yet deployed the technology for this conference, so you know, <laughs> can relax today. Yeah, yeah. but then there is, there is some others, like uh, uh, accelerating recruitment. If you take Unilever, you know, by scanning the data, uh, they've been able to move from four months delay to four weeks delay in recruitment. So there is, there is places everywhere in all industry. If you take Virgin Train in, uh, in, the, in the UK, uh, on claims processing, you know, which is usually a huge uh, impact if you don't do it well for your uh, client uh, happiness or engagement, they increase 20% of volume because they just did it automatically to manage the claims of, uh, of, uh, of their uh, clients. And 75 of all the claims, sorry, were automated. You know, so I think, uh, and you can go from examples to examples. Uh, no, 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 like in every industry, it's, uh, it's applicable. Case is clear. Um, let me, I wanted to probe yeah. a little bit one thing you mentioned around the execution, which is the mix of, you know, humans and AI, right? Yeah. And, and you certainly, from Catherine's conversation, you see that this stuff doesn't happen in isolation. It happens in the middle of business systems, in the yeah. middle of society. 
even in your example, let's just go on like the telco example, mm. you know, it's a classic thing. You say, yes, 50% of the work was automated, but that means there's another 50% that no. was not, and suddenly, um, you know, the workers and the, the, the experts have to work with the AI system. Yeah. Is, have you, is, that, is that something you're seeing um, out in the field as people execute this mix of people and the new AI? Yeah, I could. Uh, I, I would encourage, by the way, to read a book called Human Plus Machine. So there is just one title. It's easy. Look at it. And it's, the title tells by itself. It's Human Plus Machine. So it's not uh, replacing. The way we need to look at AI, it's not replacing a job. It's automating some tasks to augment human. So, uh, and of course, there are some basic tasks like uh, uh, in, in accounting, for example, that is going to totally automate some uh, account payable type of uh, or, or purchasing type of uh, uh, process. So you have to retrain people. But it's all about human plus machine. Um, sometimes it's, it can be a bit uh, strengthened when you are in, the, in a manufacturing system. For example, when we put uh, video analytics, it can be to automate quality control. All right, so that's that's nice, it, uh, it, it helps the quality, but as well it's implemented to uh, 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 check the workers. So if you are at, um, at some, uh, some, co some company, what they did is that they deployed, uh, uh, maybe I should say the name, like Itachi, for example, mm -hmm. they, they deploy an AI manager or AI coach, which is scanning people working, right? And then identifying whether they act properly or not. So is it human plus machine? Well, <laughs> they improve productivity by 8% by doing this. So it's a bit, yeah. so you, but the way you deploy, it has to be seen as something to help people and not to, 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 to replace people. So think about something that is augmenting the people. Like when you are in a production line, the robot will be close by to you to automate some of the task and you will focus on the added value task. So it, it, as always, when we deploy AI system, always put the human in the center and say how oh, that system will help that person. If you don't do that, then you go to the dark side of AI, which is, and then we read the press about automating thousands of jobs, and then we, we lose the benefit of it. Yeah. I was going to say, go, we'll, we will uh, go, I have lots of questions, but if mm. you guys have questions, let me just see. How many people have questions so far? Anyone on, just on the broad theme? All right. Yeah, how about uh, back there? We can throw one out. Uh, hi. And actually, if you, if you wanna, if you wanna, in addition to your question, if you have, you know, just who you are, MBA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. my name is uh, Elia Corbin. Uh, I'm a founder of a company called Predictive in UK, and uh, we are in the business of developing product. Uh, I have a question. You know, we hear about uh, a lot of AI. Can AI now product improve? Uh, the metrics that you mentioned, doubling the GDP or increasing profit of companies, and how far we are from that. Bottom line, business impact, yes. Well, um, when I started working, you know, I'm more in the, uh, even I'm working with Bruno here on strategy, I'm, I'm more working in the implementation. So the way we started was like automating. So, uh, and we work on processes that were uh, at the beginning a bit simple. So when we, when we went to, for example, to some call center. So you talk about GDP or you talk about growth of company? Uh, profit, let's take profit, profit is, is simple. Okay. Simple, so you take a call center. Just take a call center. Uh, what do you think is the, when we step in correctly, you know, doing it right, what do you think is the level of automation of a call center can it be? 80%. Uh, 90. Okay. So it, so you're, you're right, it, it's, it's in that level. So if you are a telco company, they all have call centers, right? So this is, you will look at it as thousands of jobs, okay, we can look at it this way, but it's uh, millions of cost. So if you automate a cost center, 90% of it, not only the cost of it, but the efficiency of it. Because when you, can you hear me? Or yeah, we're good. Yeah, yeah. Battery, I'm not sure the battery is still on. You're, you're running yeah. low on power? That's okay. All right, yeah, that's you what they told me. Though, right? yeah, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you, the client will come this afternoon, uh, this company, they will say that the client engagement has, has increased. So you reduce, in that case, in the call center of telco, you reduce the cost, you increase the client satisfaction, so then you're going to increase your revenue. 
So in that case, you, can, you take the full cost of a telco company, you look at the call center. Well, what's interesting is that the ones who are not doing it as well. So in that case, you improve the profitability. And usually the profitability, uh, when you do it across a company, can double it, can double it. So, and it's, it's now that it's happening. It's not like a five-year thing. It's, it's now in the next two years. But a, a telco company, just to step on, on that case, you take a telco company who is not doing it. You know, the, the th some of the stuff we start developing uh, is to help people like us who are fed up to interact with a call center. For, so for the company who have not done it, because we prefer to interact with a chatbot who's going to give the right answer instead of spending hours on phone and you know, calling back because it's not the right person and all that thing. So there are solutions that we deploy to automate what you need. For example, you change your address, okay? you post your request to a system, and the system will call the call center and discuss with the agent to change to do your task for you. Right, so that's another way <laughs> uh, to manage call center, but that was just the example to, to jump right. on your case. But, uh, but to you. give you an example, this is the level of productivity right. and, and profitability you get. About, you know, what is driving the incredible valuations of the big tech companies? Again, mm -hmm. it's hard to disentangle, but the fact is these big tech, comp tech companies sit on the best data, the most sophistication with AI. They are, mm -hmm. They've been early at cranking out you know, lots of yeah. systems that are fueling their profitability. So they're, they're clearly areas, as you say, where, yeah. where you see impact already. I mean, one thing I want to put on the table, partly for you, but just for all of us, though, mm -hmm. is some of the speed bumps that are coming. So I don't, so for example, you know, when Uber had the mistake and they, they killed the woman pushing her bike because they only had pedestrians and bike riders, it's really, if you talk to people, it's put a bit of a chill on the whole autonomous driving thing. Mm. Or I don't know if people saw last week, Amazon. So again, Amazon, yeah. one of the most sophisticated you know, drivers of this, um, had been working for years, apparently, on a long project to screen resumes, yeah. right, to automate their hiring, they had huge yeah. hiring needs. And apparently, the reports are they just walked away because, you know, in terms of what Catherine said, they didn't feel they could get the bias out. There's too many proxies, and they were too worried, especially as a big tech company today, about sort of bias issues and whether we could solve them. So I, again, yeah. I'm put you on the spot a little bit, but where, I mean, so the, yeah. where are you seeing some of the speed bumps where um, clients need to be careful or work harder um, to get back? I mean, you, you already gave a good one, which yeah. is around machine and human. Other yeah. other places where you you see people needing well, to work harder? Yeah, I mean, I mean, if they fail to do it. In our case, uh, we did not. I mean, we are recruiting 120,000 people every year. That's what we did this year. Mm. And we are using those systems. So you have to think it right uh, to be sure when you deploy, it will not be biased, et cetera. Um, I was, before I came yesterday, I was on, your, on the bias point. I was, uh, or uh, diversity as well. I was, uh, I was looking at Google last night and I, I made a try. And I, uh, I don't know Turkish. But I selected a language that I don't know well, so I type things like uh, um, uh, she is a doctor, and I put that in Turkish, and then I put Turkish back to English, and the answer was more or less he is a doctor, right? Uh, and if I type, the second one I tried was uh, um, uh, he is a, um, a babysitter, so it went to something in Turkish I don't know, and it came back as she is a babysitter, right? And that's Google. And I agree, Google is maybe the best today. So you have to be super cautious about the way you deploy. So, and it creates a new, because we talk about the jobs done or tasks, it creates new jobs like we need to teach system. Because we need to teach a system like that because now machine learning works, so we need to teach, as you said before, Catherine, we need to teach system what is right and what is wrong. Because it's like a kid. You need to, you need to teach to the kid what is right and, and it takes I mean, for my, mine, it took years. Uh, it's <laughs> not finished, all right? All right. So uh, it, it, I, I think you, you need to do it in a, to your point, there is the human plus machine, but then you need to include responsive AI, uh, uh, responsible AI. So methods, techniques to, to, to bring not only the ability to deploy all those tools, which is interesting, or mastering the data, but methodology around do AI in a responsible way, and then, coach the system not to be biased, 
manage the diversity type of issue. So it's, a, it's like new jobs as well, right? Very nice, nice example. Yeah. Uh, another question, <laughs> uh, in the middle here, Annette, uh, my colleague yep. uh, from the strategy department. Okay. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. But there is Bruno to help me from strategy uh. as well. <laughs> So the examples you talked about are most it make me think a bit about the 60s when I, you know computers were introduced about making processes more effective and efficient. You know call centers work better. Mm -hmm. So where do you see the major disruptive potential of AI? Yeah. Well, um, I don't know if you if you tell me if you believe it's disruptive. Uh, if you are in the manufacturing industry, so we've been uh, the. F the Previous industrial revolution was about automating tasks. So we had uh, robots with harm taking things and moving things. So th that, that we did. Uh, what we see now happening is that the second level that happened, as I said before, maybe it's not disruptive enough, was around uh, uh, using video analytics to instead of, you know, if there is something to capture and there is something in the middle, it will go around or stuff like that, right? So it will manage video analytics to manage the quality as well of what you develop. What's happening now uh, in manufacturing is that instead of developing and configuring the robot to say you need to do this and then this and use video analytics to check the quality of the work, you, you show the end product on a picture, right? And, and then the robot will figure out how to get there, how to build the pieces and pieces to develop this product. So, showing the end product in manufacturing and the robot to find a way to build that product. Is that disruptive? Mm -hmm. Not enough? Mm -hmm. Why, Matt? I mean, I think there's an open... Well, it's a, we're talking about companies, so we have to use, in that case, example, I, 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 it's not that I don't care about fundamental research, I care about applied AI. I care about things that you can put in a company. So a call center is a case. Uh, designing a new product is a case. It's all about creating more revenue or improving the bottom line. So those are, that can only be life example. But maybe you can zoom but more in your questions to see which area you wish to deep dive right. in. Well, I'd be interested in your view on that. Because, I mean, there's yeah. an open question. Any new technology might be more or less disruptive, right? There's yep. plenty. I mean, even though recently we're used to focusing on digital technologies like sharing economy that were super disruptive, we know in general yeah new technologies are sometimes disruptive, sometimes they can reinforce yeah. existing positions. And if you think of AI as like a process thing deep inside with people have data, well, I don't know, maybe it isn't as disruptive. Well, but uh, do you uh, have a point of view you wanna? Exactly, but you, yeah, okay. That's okay, we'll see. Yeah, for example, I'm on the board of a company called Randstad, which is a lot of human resource uh, thing. And so the big question is, um, is the whole recruiting and staffing industry, uh -huh. um, is it just run staff being very, very smart in you know, doing better recruiting and selection oh, yeah. and matching processes by using AI as an existing company? Yeah. Or will there be you know, other companies who completely make companies like Randstad or ADECO superfluous because they use AI and make the work these companies do even if they improve their processes? Uh, Superfluous. Well, there is both sides. I mean, I know those companies a bit, and they are working on putting AI in their system to automate their work because they are getting massively disrupted. And as well, some of the profiling they were proposing will not be requested anymore, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, and workers tomorrow will get implants, you know, to improve. We're going to improve our memory stock in our head. I mean, <laughs> You know, we're going to augment the, 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 the people, so the, the, the demand of skills is going to evolve indeed, yeah? <laughs> Absolutely. We'll take this up over coffee. I would just say, you know, one of the mm. things that drives how disruptive is how fast it goes. Yeah. Like, the faster it goes, the more shit big companies are in because they can't move usually that fast. Yeah. So I think this issue about also even social speed bumps, things that slow this down, mm. will actually play to the advantage yeah. of, of your company. We, we had that problem as Accenture, you know, we, we employ 450,000 people. And there is a lot of stuff two years ago, three years ago that were like to be automated. So, you know, like BPO, like operation, we automated around uh, uh, 40,000 functions, but we still recruit more people. 
because we position the people on more high value stuff or new type of jobs. So I think if you do it in a clever way, whether you are an ADECO, you, 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 you have to find the new jobs or the new people and f train them differently as well to, to, to be proposed. So if you put the human back in, in the inside of your strategy, then you can still increase capacity. And the one in our study that was doing AI correctly will increase in the next few years. I mean, every year, like, I mean, the company I mentioned will improve their profitability by 50%, will increase their capacity by 10% year on year. The economy, it's just fact-based. So, so Eve, we, we need- I will talk on coffee yeah, yeah, We well. need to uh, <laughs> start wrapping up. Well, we have to wrap up, but I, sure. maybe just briefly though, touch a little bit on you know, th the execution side, right? Okay. So, so again, you work in digital transformation, always impressive that, you know, Accenture tries to do what you sell, as it is. So what, yep. what did you, I mean, as you think about, you know, ongoing digital transformation, you've now got this new level of yep. AI, any just, you know, brief high level yep. advice on, on how companies well, should be navigating the yeah, longer sure. term changes? No, yes, Peter, we've been uh, disrupted ourselves. Because before there were people like uh, Bruno who receive a call from a client and say, hey, I have a problem, this is it, can you come and help? And there is an RFP, so we'll select the best, etc. Then he was doing his job, then it was done, he was proposing step two, three, four, or whatever. Then the, some consulting people were coming in, shaping the process, and when it was done, then it was an RFP for uh, implementing a new system or whatever. This is done, this is over, this is the old world. So innovation is at the core of company. So the question, your question is how to drive innovation in company. I think that's, more, that's maybe the way I, and the, the way I look at it is so many companies, I don't know for yours, but so many companies, they do innovation everywhere. You know, so they are, they are proof of concept in that department, proof of concept in that one. Does it comes to a product? No. No, because it's not industrialized. So the way I see it, and personally my job I'm doing, I'm always advising company to structure kind of a, a place where they do innovation, which I will call like a digital factory to make it nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, use digital factory, looks nice. Mm -hmm. So you, you create a space and you ask a 200,000 people company to concentrate in one physical space or could be multiple in the world where all the best talent are and you put those best talent from the business, from IT, from strategy, from marketing, from everywhere, you put and we usually collaborate, we put our best people with the latest view on technology, on strategy, with few startups, and you ask all of the company to innovate there, send their ideas over there, and then you industrialize the thinking. So if you want to do a poke on AI, uh, then it's going to be there. And those, there is a specific methodology to come from an idea to a product. And then on those entities that I will call digital factory, then the output of it is an MVP. And then that product goes back to the BU for business deployment. So what I want to say is that you can't ask a business unit what, how to implement AI. It has to be a, a thinking process. So you have to create an environment where people can work together and uh, you can go and uh, ask and visit, for example, the one done at Thales here around or some others where people are creating the product together. So they don't come to us and say, this is the product I want to create. They have no clue what they want to develop. They have no clue how to use AI. They have no clue how to manage a drone fleet using AI. So it, it's all about getting the right uh, design thinking process in and the factory will get the product MVP and then back to the business unit. So that's, if you, it, there is one way to industrialize the, the way you deploy AI mm -hmm. for me is to do it, uh, is to do it this way continuing to fuel the need for digital transformation yeah. and innovation. Ladies and gentlemen, Eve, thank you. No, thank you. Too. Thank you. Excellent. All right.